like this. So let's talk about old work boxes uh, on my screen. What you see there is that it has this screw, upper right, lower left, and what happens when you screw that in, that tab pinches against the back of your plywood and it just closes up. It basically flips up and starts pinching in. That's how these things work. So you put it in, you've got your wires coming in from, so you kind of feed the wires through the back of this thing. Uh, so, so like we're in assembly process, step one, take off the box we put in as a placeholder for the inspector. We're gonna uh, take those wires, uh, when we put the panel on, we feed those through the hole. Uh, then we take all the work box, feed the wires through that, put it in the wall. That's, that's kind of the process, what we have to do. Um, and the, the, so that's how the old work box, you, you can insert it. You cannot just insert these boxes, that they, there's no way to attach it to, to just a hole in the wall. These so-called old work, old work boxes, they allow you to stick it in and, and have it attached through those upper right and bottom left screws. You guys see those little tabs? They, they basically turn up like that and then pinch in. So uh, there's the tabs in there, put into the wall. When you turn it, it turns up and then it pinches in so it grabs the actual sheathing. That's, that's how these things work. Um, so that's the old work boxes discussion. Now, what's the relevant thing for now? For now, I'll just put it like a couple inches. Like, is there a standard height for wall outlets? I don't think there's actually any stip. Uh, is there one? I don't see. I didn't see that in the electrical. Is that electrical code? Is there a height requirement for outlets? for electrical outlets. I know there are requirements for kitchen and bathroom. Yes, you have to have them certain distance above the, the, the countertops or the bathroom sink. Elsewhere, let's see. How high do outlets have to be from the floor? About 12 inches. It's like about 12 inches. I'm not sure they, um, I was looking at the last, I'm not sure you, it's a standard or a requirement. But, I mean, the practical requirement is that don't put it on the floor, like in case you spill things on it, um, even though they do make in-wall, like in-floor outlets, so that's not really an issue. But, but it is an issue, like if you do have an in-floor outlet, yeah, water can get in there, so uh, not the best idea, perhaps. Uh, so let's make it con in a convenient location. Uh, so if we have the utility channel, just put it right above it. The utility channel is about about 12 inches, so put it like right above there. Uh, but leave, like when we're cutting out that cutout, leave like an inch of the exterior panel so that you make sure you can, um, you don't break the edge where you cut out the box. And the only other consideration, we have blocking there, which is one and a half, or it's actually 1.75. Um, actually, that's, that's the first determinant because the ply into your plywood goes to the bottom of the blocking. You actually have to have a start 1.75 above that. So actually we need to go like two inches or to be safe like three inches because it's got that tab on it. So let's say three inches off the edge is the bottom of the box. So we're at about 15 inches or so. What are we cutting the pipe with? So we would drill through and then put in a, re a reciprocating saw blade. Okay. Uh, so drill through, probably probably drill through two corners. So you the opposite corners you make a little drill hole enough to get a reciprocating saw blade. You can go one way and the other. It's kind of hard to turn corners with those. So 
probably drill two opposite corners and and go the other two directions. So reciprocating saw. Um, let's see how. Typically, this kind of stuff is well. What do people say? How to how to drill out electrical box in plywood. Here's how to cut a hole in an outlet in the If you seconds. are a home in Missouri, let me show you a little secret in your home. I bet you didn't know about. If you how you do it? They make drill. Sure that you want to keep it approximately the same height. So you would take this where you want to. Um, you can mark. So however you determine the easiest way for you is or whatever. So how do they start that hole? Now this is this is drywall. Um, how do they start? Have available. You now want to cut right. out that shape of the box. So that's what we're going to do now. Just cut it down on the lines. Uh, how are they starting that hole? That doesn't apply to us. I think in drywall you can pretty much poke through drywall with a tool like that. I don't know. Can you? I don't, I'm not experienced with drywall. Here, they're kind of not showing how they made the first part of the cut. Um, that's how they do that. Oh yeah, but let's look at the final thing. Like, well, what do they do at the end? Let's show this because that will be an old yeah, the box. same thing on the bottom. So it actually locks up top corner, bottom corner. Yep. Oh, I'm place it back so in. Put it in. Once they screw those screws in, that's all it is. They want to go slow with this. You don't want to go too fast. So but you just want to snug this up on the back of the wall. Yeah, it's those tabs that were in a behind they kind it, of pinch in. When he screws this down, enough. they they you pinch down. want to pull down through the sheet, right? Plywood. That's what happens there. That's it. But yeah. There you go. They didn't show how they do it all. So, in our case of wood, you can't just poke see that's through. Locked in? Well, yeah, that's how you would cut a box and get it into the wall. And then you have the cover, so I'm any like rough edge there, the cover goes out. You know, goes go out to extremes to build your dream. Yeah. So that's old work boxes. Uh, but yeah, we, we got to say, we got to be above our interior uh, electrical channel blocking and that is 1.75 so we got to be at least 1.75 give it like another inch for the tab so like 2.75 or just three so next person let's locate that electrical box three inches up and put it next to the stud uh, who wants to go next I'll go next mm -hmm. uh, can you also paste a link to the google slides into today's page mm -hmm.
Um, can so you uploaded so we down the latest download of mo one module two? Yeah, from ten. Uh, but there could be something wrong with my setup. I'll try to download the one from. Oh wait, that one doesn't put it down. I just downloaded ten and it's showing that it has a junk box. Yeah, maybe someone else who <laughs> can who uh. Friends, why don't you go with it? Well, actually, yeah, but we can do we can do the the standard one for the junction box itself because that we don't that's like behind. We're not cutting anything out for that, mm -hmm. so we can use the old one, um, the regular one. And the regular ones, I guess, there's a price difference. The old work is more expensive, so both would work. Well, not exactly. The both wouldn't work because for the you could, but then you have to cut out the bottom channel, which you don't want to do. No, those wires got to be hidden behind. We got to hide that, so you don't want to be cutting out the channel. Therefore, you're using the standard one that goes inside, inside the panel, because we don't have to do anything to it in terms of cutting out stuff. It's we just attach it. Okay. From the bottom, from bottom the of the panel, bottom. but we don't have the, well, from the top of the, the blocking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also change the orientation. Uh, yeah, it should be vertical should be. because, uh, yeah, outlets are typically vertical um, because that's how you, you nail them in typically. Hmm. Actually, if you have an old work box, it's like, I don't think there's a requirement for it being vertical or horizontal, but vertical is pretty standard. So it's the same uh, workbox for the junction and the outlet. The outlet is uh, screwed forward a little further for its faceplate. Well, right? actually the concept is no they're gonna have to be different because the old work box mounts to the surface and as far as the surface of the utility channel itself that's there is no holes there it's closed off because we're basically closing behind the utility channel all the wires and the junction boxes but for an outlet we need to, that to go to the outside so the junctions are just hidden inside the wall whereas the outlets they gotta penetrate to the outside so you can plug things in is the utility channel like uh, part of the wall that comes forward a bit? Yes. Okay, is it just the yeah. lower half or is it the whole wall? Just the lower half. I mean, the tiny part, like 12 inches at the bottom. So that, um, let's see, do we have one picture of that in the work doc? Look at slide number 26 or 25 in the current working doc. That's the utility channel. It's just at the bottom 12 inches or so. So it's, yes, it does come forward. All the green things are wires that are just run, running through. So it's, it's noticeable. It's like another piece of yeah, trim. It's a, it, yeah, it's a piece of trim. So it's still the white thing, but it's trimmed up on its edge with that uh, with a little bit of trim on the top and the bottom. Yeah, you have to trim that. So at the expense of this trimming job and, and getting that all closed up there properly, we have the ability to run wires very easily. Like if you want to make an extension of your electrical system, say you do an addition, just run more wires in there, just open up the channels 
and run another wire through as opposed to now drilling like a whole bunch of more walls or tr opening up your drywall or something or yeah or your walls so it's convenient to just run run power in an accessible way What are other ways to do it? I mean, the industry standards, once again, so you drill them through studs and you go on, on the inside. Once you once you do that, typically drywall is, I mean, once you put in drywall, it's like it's major reconstruction if you wanted to change some electrical inside. Here we're making it accessible. All right, so it's 3.5 off that blocking. That's it. I'll make it three. So we need 1.7. Uh, well, actually, no, no, no. It's actually only 1.25 because it, we said it's uh, three inches off the bottom of the blocking. The bottom of the blocking is where the plywood ends up, the interior plywood. So if you're going three inches up, you're only like 1.25 inches above the edge of the blocking. That's all we need. So, yeah. I'm sorry, so 1.25 1, 1 inches? Above the blocking. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, who wants to try uh, the next step and what would be the next step? So, do we get it positionally right as in terms of 3 8 inch? I guess uh, we should say for the final correct thing, since it's going to be sticking through the plywood, we got to make it 3 8 inches sticking out. Uh, I, sorry, I didn't see the screen share. What's the status of the. Um, Okay, but maybe next next person do that. Um, wants to go. Okay, Joshua. So let's make it stick out a little bit, and specifically three eighths of an inch, so that we're exactly even with the surface of the interior plywood. Joshua, are you trying to share your screen yet, or not yet? I think uh, press is okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I yeah. Is this screen share working? Because I'm None not. of these. Uh, I'm not in the same problem as Paul had with the not seeing the the boxes. It's I mean, a file caching yeah. issue with Wiki Media Media You're downloading the la the one that's previous or something? Um, I tried downloading Ken's. And now I tried downloading Prince's. Both of them don't show the box. Hmm. Has it, has it been updated? Like the the video wiki in server in general? Probably not. Not in the last year. Well, he was able to download Ken's. Yeah, I was able. Well, to. it works. It seems to work for some. Um, maybe. Maybe he already had the file loaded. 
before someone uploads a new both. version, <laughs> then you still get the old one, but maybe Prince never loaded Wall 2 until it was time to get Ken's updates. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, caching issue. There's some caching issues. I think probably a, like an update on MediaWiki that we have is probably a solution. Okay. I've tried that when I was working with that. That would never work for me. But yeah, try it. Try to see if it works. Joshua, are you sharing your screen? Yeah, works for me. I can see. No, that's good. What's wrong with it? Um, oh, oh, that, that, that part. I see. Yes. Uh, yeah, Joshua, you see that? Um, Your step would be to rotate. So let's test the rotate function. Those are just simple objects there. You want to rotate them. Uh, so get into one plane. So let's see if you know how to do that. Uh, make, but you're not rotating this way. You've got to rotate the other way. So you wouldn't be able to rotate it from that perspective. You're hiding something, so maybe make that transparent or just hide it. Yep. Oh, so now they're actually behind the blocking too. So they need to be moved up. Yeah. Yeah, but first, so step one, rotate it. Right, so rotate them. Mm hmm. That's it, and you can type in, uh, you don't have to do it. Yeah, you always gotta, you gotta really do the number, like whatever the number is, because by hand, you're always gonna get it off a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Rotate. Oh yeah, and then you can. Oh, there you go. You can also rotate that way. Um. Then you got to type in that. Yeah. Yeah, it still needs to get rotated the other direction. Yeah, you, now you're, the box is facing me or the viewer, so you still have to rotate it the other way. So. Yeah, it's it's deeper than it's. Yeah, you gotta rotate it 90 degrees uh, clockwise now. From this viewpoint. Yeah, from that viewpoint. Mm hmm. Oh, if you open a private window, like if your browser has a private window. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's what I did. Yeah. Private window solves it? Um, yeah, because yeah. you're not logged in as a user and you don't have cookies. Uh, okay, how do I find the private window in the browser? Uh, so, say on Chromium. Is that. Tab, you would say like new private tab, new mm. private window. New incognito window? Yeah, incognito. Okay. Alright, okay. Hmm. So that's how you can have a fresh session without okay. wiping your browser. Cool.
Yeah. Um, so here, yeah. So yeah, 1.25 inches above. That means three inches from the bottom of the actual panel when, at the end of the day. Yeah, so you crashed and you didn't save the, the rotate, but maybe give it to the next person. So just save it, save it from here. You rotate effectively one. Uh, the other one didn't get saved. Well, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, no, it's, it's the old file before I rotated it. So. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's, just, it's the same file if someone downloads Yeah, if someone it. else wants to go next, let's, let's do. Yeah, let's actually complete it. So two things. One is uh, rotate in the proper direction, and for the that's for the junction box. For the actual outlet, get it out the three eighths of an inch in front, so it's actually in the correct position, actual position it's going to be, so it's flush with the plywood once put on. Mm. Oh, do you, you want to do that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, um. do one. Do put the put the junction in the correct place. And maybe I'll I'll finish the last one or something. that's easy to manipulate, like one, two, three, oh. four in the screen. Um, two, that's two. So you want to hide hide the rest or make everything transparent so you can see where you are. Okay. Control A in, uh, yeah. in the part tree and you can set oh. transparency. Yeah. And then we'll just, uh, we'll just we'll control see. right on the within your viewing window. Yeah.
So you, you want to get into a square viewpoint, like this angle view, I mean, can you tell which direction you'd be rotating? Exactly. I can't really, so. Do you know which direction you're rotating now? Um, kind of. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's so select, make sure you select the in the viewpoint in that window. Select the view. Okay. So now you'll be rotating whatever you. Okay. You gotta draw your handle first. I think your handle is looking weird. I think it's still looking for the handle. Oh. Maybe escape out of that. Click on one point on the box and then a the second point to, to draw your handle. One point and another point. Create a handle. Um. That point could be anywhere. Okay. It's just the line around which you're rotating. Looks like you're in the correct view view window. When you click the rotate, you gotta click one point and a second point before you start rotating. Okay. So click one point, move away, so you have a straight line somewhere. There. Oh no. I think you selected, selected another object. thing. Okay, so you gotta select the object first. Double click on it to select the object. Well, it's rotating in the wrong direction. It's like a, I think the problem is the view. Because if I if I selected the cube from here, mm -hmm. and then I do the rotate. Well, now you now I can't. Those arrows, you gotta skip out of that thing. Hmm. Okay, to rotate, what are the steps? Select the plane in which you're rotating. Hmm. Select the object. You gotta draw a line around which you rotate. And then you rotate. Um, if I could hide... You're, you're hiding behind the... Maybe this yeah, make that disappear. I'm trying to figure out what it is. You can click on, just click on it there, like a, and hit spacebar. Once again, click on it and hit spacebar. Okay, there. So it's exposed. Double. Before you do that, double click on object you wanna you wanna rotate. There. No. Now, touch one point. Create a line, which would be your rotation line. Yeah. So you need a second point. Okay. 
but they got okay we use the gesture that might be that's your gesture na navigation have you have you paid attention to which which way of navigation you're using no okay so we want to use gesture navigation in this way doesn't really matter but you need to let's walk in Let's see. Okay, so we double click, select the plane, rotate, so I should draw a line and another. Right, so still the right. Still make it. It's like you're clicking, it offsets where you clicked at by some. Yeah. Sure about Let's try it again. So that thing, the view. Mm -hmm. Rotate. As soon as you click, there's already the first point. Like the cursor going is going on there. Yeah. It's not no. putting, it's not is anyone else process. able to do it? Do you rotate yeah. properly? You've done it before. I don't know. Uh, I think because we made it positionally correct, it's far away from its origin. I think it always rotates around its origin. Hmm. Um. I mean, it's not good. There we can also just change the dimensions. So, like, flip the two dimensions instead of rotating it to make it tall in the vertical direction. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Um, Let me see if I get the same issue in my end. Wondering if there's constraints. around the line, but it's like when he when he tries to rotate his it like it sets when he clicks here it like sets the line out there. So you just like set it right there and then rotate it. So you're in draft and you just like right click to rotate or uh it's a, it's the shortcut so it's just uh RO and then you can draw the line and uh, it's a good question. Or you can just go and you can type in the amount of rotation and manually, you know, do another So this axis of rotation is already there. Well, so that's zero zero minus one. Uh, that's that's what I believe it was. I mean, we expand it. Yeah. Yeah, so. And the angle will multiply the that in, in that particular uh, uh, axis. Sure, what's happening? I mean, it's working on mine.
and then the junction box, where do we want to lay that? How deep in the channel? Like right at the front? Yeah, things go into it from the, the back, like from the back hole there. So yeah, it could be flush with the framing. That's if it's farther back. Um, let's see. Let me just put that in place. It's flush. Yeah, it should be as far forward as possible because when wires are entering into it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually taking over, I guess. All right, so here we are. I'm just thinking about it. Okay, so put them pretty much in place, almost, uh, just roughly. Uh, then I was asking, where do, how do wires go into that box? Let's draw the frame. Um, okay, so we got the frame. Uh, how do the wires go? So the if that's the interior, so you got wires running across from one panel to the next and then they enter this box they got to go into the back because the holes are in the back so the wire goes kind of wraps around back um, and the junction what we pre-wire is this short stub from here into here using wire nuts so we can do that today so let's actually draw that uh, how do you draw lines that's uh, not not cool it's not easy it's uh, the only way to do it is uh, just make features on a feature. So let's say this one is roughly okay. Um, and let's measure that. What do we got there? How much is it sticking out of the front? It's like a point five. So it's a little, a little too far out. Um, but let's assume it's okay. So. Next question was just wiring. So I wanted to just cover as far as wiring. So let's actually draw one. <clears throat> so I'm going to go, if I can pull down my screen without crashing. screen um, let me stop sharing for a second oh there we go okay so let's So just last concept, and we can show this in practice, but the, the wires are going to go from the front to, uh, let's just draw some samples of wire. We're going to go into XY. Junction boxes. Let's just do like a So we got one wire going inside there, and literally what, that's what it does, it goes inside and ends up in a box.
what did I draw there? So it's been drawn behind. Let's see where is that thing? Just did this freeform wire. It ended up being where behind, like way behind there. So what I'm gonna do, based on yeah, so I gotta build it up. I'll build that sketch here that I did. So I'll call that get rid of this thing and the sketch I'm gonna position it at Z is what like 2.5 inches so it kinda enters the back let's say 2.7 inches so yeah, I kinda drew that wire going in there bam well, but the wire would actually go, no, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go cancel that. I'm going to put it at the front because it has to be above the front 2 by 6s So this sketch, uh, we're going to be at 5.6. Then pat it out. Okay, so we got this wire coming in. That wire is actually going to bend down under around the back because the entry of these boxes is like around the back here. So let's poke a hole through that. That's that's your that's your entrance to that box. It's got a hole through it, uh, like around the back. So I got to wrap wrap this wire and it's kind of like just roughly getting this in there. So that. Let me actually make that run a little more decent. So this one I'm gonna make it end up there. That's my wire. That wire runs to the back the back of the box so I'll, I'll do this there we go and then I'm gonna add, add a little could you use um, in draft there's, there's a dewire um, yeah. tool could you use that as well yeah, I haven't haven't used it. Can't tell what that does. Um, but yeah, so this wire is going in like that. It it goes in from the front to the back, like that, and then it continues out the back side into the other box. So let's actually draw that on there. And draw a little tube there. Yeah, so that tube, now, let's see, is that possible for it to go like that? We're going, we're noticing we're going behind, so the geometry there is important, like what's what's in the way of what? If you look at that, I, I'm sending that wire from this junction box behind the blocking and into, into the second, second junction box so I can pad that out to like seven inches or six inches yeah so that's just that's effectively what happens there but what we got to do in the finished so in the finished pad finished module it will not have this wire that we can hide but it will have the connection between this one and the actual junction box so we cut a stub of wire that goes into here enough length so we can actually put in the outlet just wire up the outlet now the outlet, um, when do we want to do that? Since rough wiring means just wire sticking out of boxes, that's the way we leave it for in the inspection phase. So connect this wire 
um, here. All it is is literally a wire that's put into one box and the other box so you can put in the, the outlet here and you wire nut. What, do you know what, what wire nuts are? Google wire nut. Wire nut. It's a thing that you you basically uh, screw that on the two wires. Wire connector. Yeah. Okay. Wire connectors. Inside this junction box, that's why it's called a junction box. You put wire nuts on those things. So when we run the wires at the end, finally just whatever wire goes into here, we'd either break that break into that wire and continue into the box or terminate that box. If you terminate that box, then you're still connecting to the junction box. And that's what happens. And this way, this, this already has this electrical pre-wired so you don't have to mess around with putting in all the wiring. This is now this is pretty simple so it's not not too bad but it saves you the work of running the wires at the end. If it now had maybe lights or a wall switch you'd run that along the the stud and into say say there's some kind of a, a wall switch anything that's in here. Um, so typically the wall switch would be at comfortable hand height here. Maybe a wall light would be up up somewhere here. But yeah, I mean it's pretty simple. It's like at the end of the day we run this wire here but we pre-wire with these boxes and with the connecting wire. And it's just the fact of that you're cutting the wires, you're stripping them, you're getting that all ready. That's all steps that means once you actually put the wire and put the module into place all those steps are pretty much done so you don't have to uh, have that as a dedicated step at the, at the stage where each each of the panels has all the electrical inside then it's just running the wires from the electrical breaker panel which means that the electrician if we hire an electrician like if you have them do that um, I mean, you don't have to. You can do it yourself. You can get an electrician. They would just run the wires from the breaker box to just simply running them out, be on the utility channel, and then close the utility channel by screwing in it into the, the blocking at the top or bottom. And it doesn't get screwed in between the panels or anything like that. Um, first, because there's wires in there, so you don't want to screw anything in here. You're screwing it at the top and bottom where there are no wires. And if you screw into this this one here, which is 1.5 depth, you want to use shorter screws, like like say one and a half inch screws. Otherwise, if the screws stick out, that's a danger point. Uh, you want to make sure that the screws are not sticking out of the the blocking that you're putting in, so you're not puncturing any of the wires. That's uh, that's a basic, very basic outline of a single outlet box and this would be actually hey that's that's what we would end up with in the house outlets being at that height you probably want the outlets to be as low as possible so that when you have cords on lamps or anything you got just closer to the the floor the better mm -hmm. so let's build um, today let's build go through Organize the panels out there so in the rack, let's identify exactly what we have, like if there's any other missing ones. So we, sh we should be able to check off, okay, finally, we've got these panels in posi in, uh, in order, so we're not searching for them. Uh, probably move them into organize, basically organize, do the quality control, put on all the insulation panels and house wrap, and then sample electrical. So let's do let's do like uh, organize and then let's build a panel together and then see if we can divide that from there see how far we get on a single panel just go through all these steps integrating what we talked about here and then uh, see if we can break up into people taking on their panels mm -hmm. cool any questions about this or so you already have the electrical box yeah 
got wire in electrical boxes. It means you're using cutters. You cut the wire. It's a little stub, you know, we just measure, okay, enough to go in there and stick out, say, six inches out the box. So you have enough working length uh, for uh, once you're attaching the, say, the outlet specifically. It's the white 15 amp wire. Typically, a lot of these are 50 amp outlet boxes. It's the white household wire, standard. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the white wire is white. Hmm? The, the outlet boxes that you have, are they the old? What do you call them? No, they're not old work boxes. We have the standard ones, which we need to do in the interim, as we discussed about the, the code inspection. So once we have this, then once we, all we're simulating that, so that we can make the placeholder happen for for the real build. Like right now we just need a placeholder for where we're gonna attach things. And then when we do the panel cutouts, we can do that if we can identify, okay, this is our, well, we wanna make the cuts in the panels themselves when we're out there, just to make sure, like, yeah, just to make sure that they're not, they're not going to have to be super accurate, but, but let's do it out there so we know that they're roughly accurate so that we're still good. Mm -hmm. Martin, can you post the Google Slides link? I can't find it at least. I see. So it's in today's, let's see, the wiki page of today. Um, Yeah, day 15 working doc, number one, yep. Okay, I missed that, thanks. Yep. All right. Any other questions on this? It'll get, you know, once you start seeing this and touching this and actually building this, it'll become more obvious. But, you know, on this, this wall detail, the modular utility channel, did take some thinking about it because you have to consider how the codes work, how our modularity works, how the interconnection works, that you're not puncturing wires. Uh, there's actually quite a bit in there. So it's not, like once you build it, it's very transparent, but before you get to it, it's, it did, did take us a little bit of time to kind of arrive at this. And I can't say I know anybody that does it this way. As I said, the, the standard is, is uh, holes through the studs and other than that, like, no innovation has happened over the last century, so uh, it's, I haven't seen uh, other people doing this yet. Uh, what we can do is pre-cut the materials for it. We can do that. We we would install that once in place after, like at the point where we're closing up the utility channel. We can start cutting that stuff into place. Um, so if our CAD, so the ideal procedure would be we, we quality control all the panels to make sure that all the utility channels are uniform. So maybe, you know, in case we miss some that are off. So that's one thing. Um, so basically the blo blocking location is the critical, uh, both top and bottom, because that determines whether our panels fit at all, right? Whether they end up at the right place. So that's, that the, that's the major quality control point, uh, as well as some things like, okay, our, is the blocking flat? I, I did see some, some it's like sticking out a bit. We might want to possibly fix some of those. Um, the only other, a quality control point I know we do have to do is for the doors and windows we want to replace the outer studs so it goes all the way to the top like we discussed before so we want to trim the one and a half inch of off each side to make that happen so that's we can do that in, in bulk um, today off as we go off of the two by four yeah Pattern yeah so take take the circular saw we run it up there. You can do it in place. You don't have to take it off. So you don't have to dismount too many, too many things. Just take off the outer stud, cut the cut the two by twelves, and then put the longer pre-cut stud. Typically, the nine foot pre-cut for the first floor, the eight foot pre-cut for the second floor. 
um, so not too bad but um, yeah that, that definitely simplifi simplifies uh, it's, it makes it easier to we saw how fragile those headers were when we, when we were carrying the modules so yeah that's, this definitely will help because you don't stabilize the the headers like that we have panels coming into each other that's the st stabilization point and also the top plate being put on that stabilizes everything Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll upload this one.